Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel, I'm Rob and I hope you are having a wonderful day today. Today we're jumping into some malicious compliance. Please check out the KCC Discord linked in the description down below. There you can talk to me and a whole bunch of KCC fans who hang out there on a regular basis. I look forward to seeing you there. Our first story today comes to us from Shop Hopper. A letter from our CEO, Mr. Johnson. Let's jump right in. I just came back from a great skiing trip with a bunch of colleagues. It was a short holiday on our private time and paid in full by anyone who joined the trip. In other words, it was a private trip, with all attendees working at the same company. The youngest person in the group was fresh out of school, while others have been in key positions in the company for decades. The company I work for is a Dutch engineering firm with 1,000 plus employees. This field of work is dominated by men. We are a professional yet very informal organization, where everyone addresses each other on a first name basis. Our former CEO was with us on the trip, let's call her Kathy Johnson. Not only is she a great skier, she is also a very outgoing person who loves to have fun, and who hates pretentious behavior. By the way, the reason that she's not the CEO anymore, but still works at the company, is that we have a mandatory rule that requires the executive board to step down at the age of 55. The thought behind that is that the best performing, fresh-minded leaders are generally not people who are well past 60 years of age. On the day of our return trip, a 10 hour drive, we were carpooling. We had already vacated the hotel and went out skiing until well after lunchtime. While we were changing clothes out in the open in the car parking, she shared a great story. While she was the CEO, she received many letters addressed to the CEO, Mr. Johnson or Mr. C. Johnson. These letters were all based on the false assumption that the CEO of an engineering firm must be a man. She instructed her secretary to return every single letter unopened that addressed her as a man. Her secretary, also a woman, loved doing that. She returned dozens of letters over the year, stating that there was no Mr. Johnson at her company. When I asked Kathy about the replies, she told me that the senders invariably either sent a second letter with profuse apologies or were never heard of again. Now, OP clarified a few things after the story. It's in an edit down below and it says, Given the massive amount of comments, it seems I need to clarify a few things. Why mention the ski trip? Well, that's where the story started for me. So that's where I started my writing. Sorry, guys and gals. I didn't know it would be graded as a master thesis. Kathy casually told me the story while we were standing bare pants in a car park. Not a likely setting for interaction with most executives out there. Was it relevant to the readers? Probably not, but I hope it might add some background information about her personality. As I wrote, nothing pretentious. About missing opportunities by returning the letters, of course the secretary consulted Kathy about every letter before returning it, which always gave them a good laugh together. Obviously, no harm was done to the company's business interests. This particular engineering firm consistently outperforms all other engineering firms in the country. It didn't get in that position with poor management skills. She's wise enough to know what she is doing. For what it's worth, she was elected European CEO of the year a few years back. Where is the malicious compliance? She obviously knew that the letters were meant for her, but returned them to make the senders aware of their own prejudice that engineers, especially those in key positions, can only be men. Throughout her career, she fought for more diversity in the engineering world, and this was one way to create awareness. Okay, so I went through a lot of the comments on this story, and a lot of them are saying that the whole skiing part of the story was completely irrelevant to the story. You know what I have to say about that? All of those people in the comments should write their own story sometime and put it up on the internet, because then they can live with the comments from a whole bunch of people who don't appreciate how hard it is to actually put stuff like this out there. Do me a quick favor and take a look down below the video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're actually not subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. This next story comes to us from Visual Suggestion 487. I did exactly what my nurse manager asked me, and it caused her trouble. Let's jump right in. All right, I never thought I would have to make this post, but here we go. I used to work as a patient monitor at a hospital during the pandemic. 
My role was to take care of mostly psychiatric patients. For example, monitor them, talk to them, chart it, etc. We are told to always stay with one-to-one -one patients until someone relieves us and exchange reports before we leave. One day, I got assigned to take care of a psychiatric patient in a specific wing of the hospital who happens to also have COVID-19. No surprise here, I am trained on how to handle this. For some annoying and unintuitive reason, the hospital nursing office has this thing, where if there's a patient monitor watching a COVID patient, then every two hours, they must switch with another patient monitor who would watch a non-COVID patient. Wouldn't that expose more people? Whatever. So this meant that I would have to switch after my first two hours of my shift with another patient monitor who happens to be in the emergency room. I would also like to add that my first patient was very aggressive and worked up as he wanted to go home. I was a bit on the nervous side because he punched the wall and kept jumping out of frustration. After an hour and 45 minutes, I had to push the panic alarm, which caused security since he was being so restless. Since it was almost time for me to leave, the nurse told me to step outside the room and he'll stay with him as security talks to the patient. Eventually, we were able to fulfill the patient's request and start discharge papers. Now, I'm not sure how many of you know this, but discharge paperwork takes a bit of time. Maybe an hour or two, depending on how busy the staff are. But anyways, since it was two hours in for me, it was time to switch with the other patient monitor, as protocol, like I mentioned earlier. When I went to the ER, where the other patient was located, I warned the other patient monitor about the aggressive patient, and that she should be very careful. Another two hours pass by, and I have to switch again with this patient monitor. But someone has to watch this ER patient till I go, and switch, so I kindly ask this patient's nurse to watch him, until the other patient monitor comes back. This is where things go downhill fast. I had just gone to that wing of the hospital where I was taking care of the first patient and I still see the aggressive patient being so restless and wants to go home. The paramedics came to take him on a stretcher, hospital bed that can be easily moved around, to take him to the ambulance and take him home. When I was walking to this patient's room, his nurse tells me that he is not a one-to-one -one anymore, which makes sense, he's going home. But I still had the ER patient's report in my hand to give to the other patient monitor, so I still stop by and give it to her. At this point, the patient monitor was not responsible for this patient as of this point, and neither was I. The other patient monitor was supposed to leave this patient and go back to her other patient in the ER. Because of that, I just went back to the nursing office to see if there was a new assignment. I do get a new assignment, and I'm with a new patient. Five minutes in, the nursing office calls me and needs me downstairs immediately. When I get there, they asked me, didn't you say that the patient was leaving and got downgraded? I say yes, and that the other patient monitor should be back to her original patient in the ER. But they tell me that she isn't. At this point, the nurse from the ER is asking where is the other patient monitor? The nursing office tried calling her and no answer. I was told to go back to the ER patient until the other patient monitor returns, and I comply. After 15 to 20 minutes with being with the patient in the ER, the other patient monitor returns, and I asked her what happened. She told me that she was just staying with the aggressive patient till he left. I told her that she was supposed to be here with her original patient, and that either way she passed her two hours with this COVID patient. But now the nursing office wanted me with the ER patient for the rest of the shift and to see the nurse manager after my shift. I was so fed up at this point. The other patient monitor went back to the nursing office and went to a new patient. Fast forward till after my shift was over. The nurse manager wanted to speak to me and the other patient monitor because of that wild confusion and how we left the ER patient alone for 5 or 10 minutes. We both explain our sides of what happened and that nurse manager thinks that it was my fault that the ER patient was alone and that he could have harmed himself. I explain, one, I respectfully asked his ER nurse to be in charge of him until the other patient monitor arrives. Two, the aggressive patient was discharged, so no more one-to-one. -one. So the other patient monitor needed to leave and proceed to the ER patient. Three, I did everything that was told. The nurse manager still applauded the other patient monitor for staying with a non-one-to-one -one patient till the last minute. 
and talk down on me for basically following protocol, telling me that you should have never left that ER patient. Okay, fine. Not even one week later, I was with a patient who was getting discharged, and I did exactly what the nurse manager told me to do. Stay with the patient till the last minute, even when they aren't one-to-one -one anymore. This time, the nursing office knew that this patient was leaving, and that they were expecting me back at their office soon. But the discharge papers aren't done, and three paramedics were with the patient waiting and told me that it's okay to leave as well as the nurse. I told them that I needed to stay until the last second. The nurse manager runs into an issue where she needs me with another patient. She tried calling me. Where are you? The patient you have is getting discharged, and we need you here. I tell them, oh, but I should stay with the patient till last minute, just like they disciplined me a couple days earlier. They kept trying to tell me it's okay and that they need me, but I said, no, it's okay, I insist. They tell me fine and to come as soon as the patient leaves. Half an hour goes by and the patient still didn't leave and the nurse manager calls me back as she really needs me, but I tell her I can't. And I also say, what if the patient hurts themselves, hmm? The manager gets annoyed and hangs up. Later, after I left the patient as she left, I went back to the nursing office and the nursing manager can't make eye contact with me. Apparently, they had to pull someone from a different role to watch the patient because I was busy. Right, I would continue doing exactly what OP was doing until they decide to remove the write-up from the file. Once that's gone, I'd say, okay, where do you need me? Also, another thing to think of is if you get written up for things that are pretty stupid in your job, then right away, you should start looking for something else because you know it's not going to be a good environment when they're starting to look for ways to get rid of you. This next story comes to us from Lord Komodi. You need to write a manual for that. Let's jump right in. A few years ago, I worked for a mildly successful healthcare provider. While the pay wasn't good, the team dynamic was great and things moved along smoothly. But like a lot of stories here, Awesome Boss left, and now things sucked with a new boss, whom we'll refer to as Boss. Shortly before that, I took a role that, despite a decent sounding title, was severely underpaid compared to anyone with a similar title, even within the same company. Every year, I would lobby for a raise, but every year, I get turned down for one reason or another. The company didn't really perform well enough, you need to improve your skills first, but on your own time and expense, your bandwidth usage is too high, yes, that was actually a reason given to me. After too many failed attempts to get a raise, I decided it's malicious compliance time. I'm just going to limit my output according to the scale of what I'm being paid. I stopped using all the shortcuts to my task and just did them all the hard way. Like, why use an Excel macro when I can do the same thing manually? Need someone on that project? Go find someone else. I'm too busy doing these things the hard way now. Need an analysis? I'd state the obvious within a couple of sentences. Sometimes, I'd even send a spreadsheet with the raw data and say, here you go. Need this yesterday? I could have actually done this task in 10 minutes, but because I'm not paid to do that, I'll get back to you tomorrow. The final straw was when they hired a trainee to assist me, but somehow gets involved in projects and even spent a weekend modifying my templates without my knowledge. Come Monday, I get in hot water for not using their new templates. It was obvious that I was being managed out. Well, two can play this game. As it happens, while they were tweaking my templates, I'm working on a new one of my own, and they were quite similar. Boss agreed to let me use the new one, but that I should write a manual on how to use it. Well, sure, I can do that. You see, Boss didn't specify how detailed that manual should be, so I just wrote something like, Step 1, Open Template. Step 2, Download Data. Step 3, Copy Chart to PowerPoint. Step 4, Send the Report. No indication which template to use, where to get the data, what to put in the slideshow, or who to send the report to. Also, I spent a whole day just figuring out which font to use, because why not? That done, I filed for two weeks leave that somehow got approved. I reasoned trainee is there anyway, and if he gets stuck, he could use the manual. On the last possible moment of the last working day before my leave starts, I handed in my two weeks notice, as per my employment contract. 
Days later, I got a call from a work buddy telling me that trainee is splitting hairs trying to comprehend what my manuals are talking about. Asked if I could maybe help, boss was too proud and too pissed to call me himself. Well, sure, I'd love to come over and help, but I'm actually two time zones away now and too busy learning about my new job. OP, this was another chance to make a boatload of money because when they want you to come back and help because they can't figure it out themselves, this is your perfect opportunity to say, hey, yeah, I will come back, but I'm a consultant now and my fees are about three times what you were paying me before. Oh, you don't want to pay that? Well, then you obviously don't want me enough. This next story comes to us from Dodohead974. You scheduled a meeting with senior executives on my last day? Cool, but you made me return all my equipment, remember? Let's jump right in. So for background, I recently changed jobs. I wore two hats at work for 18 months during COVID. And when year-end reviews came around, I got a meeting expectations and a 3% raise. Everyone else on our team of six got promoted. Needless to say, I felt the love and found a new job. So I've got my offer and accepted. But before putting in my two weeks, I realized I had accumulated personal days to the tune of eight days. I scheduled vacation so that for my last two weeks, I'd only have to work Monday and Tuesday. I made sure it was approved in our system and then tendered my resignation effective in two weeks. Now, I know this is kind of a crap way to do it, but I wasn't worried about burning bridges and they don't pay out personal days, only vacation days. So I wasn't going to lose those days. Anyways, over the weekend, I get emails, phone calls, and texts from my manager. Some angry, some in disbelief, some accusatory. It was a lot. Come Monday, what do you know, there's a meeting with my manager and the executive director first thing in the morning. Call goes exactly how you'd imagine. I'm called unprofessional. I'm leaving them in a bad situation. Why didn't I talk to them if I was unhappy? I had. Blah, blah, blah. We finally get to the point where they just flat out ask me what it's going to take to get me to stay. So I reply, permanent work from home and a promotion. To which the executive director chuckles and says, that's not going to happen. And then I add, and give me a 50% increase, which would be 2% more than what my offer was. You could hear the effing crickets through my noise-canceling Plantronics Voyager headset. Long story short, they are both irate at this point and tell me I needed to return all company property, laptop, badge, etc. ASAP, or I won't get my last paycheck. Q malicious compliance. You see, in my line of work, our teams collaborate, but we become the experts in our particular area of focus, and we were due to present our C-suite and high-level execs on my area of focus on a Friday. The same Friday that happens to be my technical last day. That also happens to be the last day of my paid vacation. I saw my manager schedule the meeting a few hours after our lovely call and accepted. I did my work the rest of the day and Tuesday as well. Signed off, got in my car, drove to our office and returned all my stuff to HR. They logged the return and told me I was all set. Now I start enjoying my paid vacation as the next week starts. I figure midweek I'll get a text about the meeting reminding me about it despite being on PTO. Sure enough, that Thursday evening I get the reminder text to which I don't respond. Come Friday, 15 minutes before the meeting, I get another text. Are you ready for the call? I don't see you signed on. I respond this time, but C-Face, not her real name, I can't sign on. You told me to return all my equipment ASAP or I wouldn't get my last paycheck, remember? So I did what you said and returned it to HR last week. Did they not tell you? She never responded, but a coworker I still keep in touch with called me a few days later to spill the tea about the call and how no one knew my area. And someone high up at one point said, you're a team lead, but can't explain what your team was doing. Turns out she's been demoted and moved to another department and I am two weeks into my new job, happy as a pig in crap. One thing to take away from this one is that if you're in the USA or Canada, as far as I know, a company cannot threaten to withhold your last paycheck. That's something that your local labor board would probably love to hear about. 
Also just wanted to mention that right in the middle of this story, bringing out the Plantronics headset thing, that almost felt like a paid advertisement. Hey, OP, blink twice if you're getting paid to say that. Check out all four OPs linked in the description down below. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow.